Many single ladies have asked me this question. Tunde, why am I still single? Is something wrong with me? Is God angry at me? Am I under a generational curse? Okay, why are men not taking me seriously? Why am I not in a long-term stable relationship? Why am I not married yet? It saddens my heart that most of the time, such ladies, such single ladies, begin to attach their sense of identity with their relationship status. And that is why in this episode, I want to remind you that your worth and your value is not tied to your relationship status and also share with you five reasons why you should ensure you get your identity in the right place before you get into any kind of serious relationship and that includes marriage. Before I share the five points, let's identify some factors that drive these issues of self-worth and esteem deep down in the heart of many single ladies. One, parents. Parents sometimes tend to respect a child who is married or who is engaged more than they respect the other or the others who are not married or engaged. Parents, please remember at all times that your children value and crave your acceptance. If anyone else in the world treats them like a second class citizen or reject them, it should not be you. You should be the people who build them up, who help them understand that their value and their worth is not tied to their relationship status. Another factor is friends. In a group of friends where majority are married or engaged, uh, they tend to not give much attention to the singles among them, sometimes not intentionally. Uh, commitment and responsibility just have changed, you know, so they don't have that much of space to accommodate their unengaged or single friends. And uh, the single friends among those such circles sometimes feel they, they no longer fit in or they don't carry much worth anymore because they don't, uh, they're, they're other, the, the other party and other friends are no longer accepting them, which most of the time is not the case. It's just responsibilities. And sometimes some friends actually intentionally, you know, uh, mock their friends who are still single, which is not the best thing to do. Uh, another factor is church. Church, can, uh, they, they play a major role sometimes in this. They tend to treat single ladies as if something is missing in their lives and they, we, we, we unconsciously, you, you guys know I'm a pastor, unconsciously we hold some special meetings for singles, special prayer meetings for singles. And these prayer meetings can sometimes be harmful if you don't handle things correctly because many single ladies then think something is broken in their life and they need divine intervention. That is, they need God to intervene in the situation, uh, which most of the time is not the situation. I'm going to get into it, into, into it in a few minutes, uh, some practical things that single ladies can do to help them navigate through the state of singleness and probably get uh, engaged or married. Another factor is brokenness in our lives. Sometimes the brokenness in our lives based on the hurt we have suffered from previous relationships or how our parents have treated us or some issues that have happened in our lives tend to make some people feel unworthy or not to have much value because they are single and uh, because they are single and most of the time many factors you know feed into this which I can't go into details but what I'm trying to say here is that single ladies should check their heart to find out what makes them feel inadequate, what makes them feel they are broken because they are single and they need to go into a relationship to be happy. Single ladies, can I draw your attention to something you may not have been paying much attention to? Do you realize that going into a relationship or getting married comes with huge responsibility? Do you know that most of the time, your expectations of a relationship or marriage may not be met, depending on what you are looking to find in a relationship. Because if you're feeling inadequate, incomplete at this point in time, you must be looking for someone to complete you when you get married or when you go when you get into a serious relationship. So if you think you are something is deficit in your life or you're on the deficit end it means you are going into you will be going to a relationship to get something and i can guarantee you that most of the time the person you you get married to or you get engaged to may not have those things may not even recognize your need 
they may actually be coming into a relationship to, for what they want to get, <laughs> which brings about chaos. And if you take your time to notice, to observe many marriage relationships, you realize that the reason why many marriage relationships are in distress today is because expectations are not being met. So you should pay careful attention to these things and not think that marriage or a serious relationship or getting engaged will fix your problem. It's important that you pay careful attention to how God defines you, how God defines your world. The Bible says that what manner of love the Father has bestowed on you that he calls you his child. Right? God loves you so much and the Bible says that is who you are, 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. You are a child of God. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says that God demonstrated his own love, his unconditional love for you, that Jesus came to die for you while you were still a sinner. Now, before you became a Christian, before you became a child of God, God saw, God saw so much worth and value in you. So now that you're a child of God, do you think you are worthless? The Bible says in the book of Colossians that you are complete in Christ Jesus, who is the head of all principality and power. I think most of the time, the reason why we're feeling adequate is because we've not come to really understand our position in Christ Jesus. We, we, we go by our feelings and we go by what people see about us, how people treat us. We don't pay much attention to what God says about us. Believe us, most of the time, I think we, we live by our feelings and not by faith. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. So I want to challenge you to choose to live by faith. Let's quickly get practical. Now, if you're still single, let me ask you a few questions. What's your routine like? Is your routine like this? Church, work, home, family commitment. Are you doing anything outside of your church, work, and home such that you are exposed to guys you know, relationships? Are you going out of your normal routine to be to be found in a sense? I'm not a dating coach, so I won't go too much into detail, but I can give you a lot of guidance as to go about this. So if you want more, a uh, one-to-one -one session with me and you want to ask me a question and you want us to brainstorm or spirit storm, right? You can drop me a comment or try to or, uh, contact me on my on social media at I am Tunde Cole. As I was saying, what's your routine like? If you don't break your routine, if you see the same people every day and you don't go out of your normal routine to meet with people, don't expect to be found of, or, or to find someone that you can go into a relationship with. I, I would like you to forget that myth that you know, there's a particular guy for you from heaven. <laughs> Time will not allow me to go into detail of, uh, uh, into that detail. If you want me to talk more about that, please drop me a comment. I have loads and loads of stuff for you in that area. But I'm just trying to get your attention into your routine. What's your routine like? The second thing I would I would like you to think about is your belief system. What do you think? Do you think you are under a curse? Do you think that it's just, there's generational curse uh, on, on your life? As long as you believe that as a child of God, that's, that is what you experience. That, is, that, that will become your reality. That will be your everyday reality. So it is important for you to check your belief system. The Bible makes us to understand the book of John, uh, John chapter 1, I think verse 12, that as many as received Christ Jesus, you know, God gave them the, he gave them the right to become children of God. And, and says children not born of flesh and blood but of the spirit so the bible makes us to understand that the moment you became a christian you became a child of god you are supernaturally broken from broken away from the effect of any kind of curse that may be in your family or household but it is important that you understand this believe this so that you can walk in the reality of it if you keep thinking there's a spiritual problem in your life, that's what you make. You will keep saying, even at, even if I thought there's a spiritual problem in your life, why don't you focus on the authority and the rights and privileges you have in Christ Jesus? Why don't you focus on the victory and the the victory and the freedom that God has given you in Christ Jesus? The Bible says that you are complete in Him, who is the head of all principality and power. The Bible says that God has given Jesus Christ to the church as a head over principalities and powers. Come on, you have the authority and the power in the name of Jesus to defeat, to deal with Satan and any demon affecting your life. You just got to believe that God is on your side. God is for you. God is for you. You got to use the authority God has given to you in Christ Jesus.
Jesus. If at all you think there's a demonic or spiritual problem somewhere affecting your life or making you feel single. Amen. And I have to also talk about that cautiously because people sometimes go through some and back on some ridiculous fasting and praying so that God can deliver them from one spirit or the other. Yeah, you can see I'm getting excited about this uh, because one of my favorite topics is the believer's authority. I like people to, I like believers, Christians, to know what belongs to them in, in Christ Jesus so that they can enforce their authority and walk in the victory God has given to them in Christ Jesus. So another thing I wanted to think about is this. Are you actually eyeing someone? Is there someone you are looking at? You, you know, you're you cre- you you're converting them in a Christian language. I would say so. It doesn't belong to you. This person is probably engaged, or this some this person is somewhere, and your eyes are so fixated on them. If you've been targeting a particular person and your eyes are set on that person, what if the person does not want to marry you? Do you think God will force their hands into a relationship with you? No, God does not force people. God does not manipulate people or go against the will of people to do do something. So if the person is not serious, if they don't want to get committed, God is not going to force them. God will provide you someone else. So if there's a particular person you have set your eyes on, please remove your eyes from them. Take your eyes off them. Now let's get into five reasons why you must get your identity right before you marry. You will make wrong decision. Your decision making process will be wrong. Because when you have the wrong perspective, when you're eyeing the wrong person, when you think you have demonic problems, you when you think you're under a curse, when you think you are worthless, when you th- think all of these negative things, it affects how you see the world, it affects how you see people. But sometimes you may actually be looking in the wrong direction, looking at the wrong person, craving the wrong thing, you know, that would not help your life because your identity is in the wrong thing. So if you think you are broken, if you think, you know, you got to get married right now, you, are li- you might become desperate and uh, you might go to places you should not go to. And that leads me to the second uh, point. Now, you will be blind to red flags because as long as a kind of happiness, an, an unrealistic happiness is your drive and your focus, you, you, you will most likely be focused on exterior or superficial things and not pay attention to the flags because you might have this kind of mindset. Finally, at last, I've broken through. My enemies are put to shame. Ah, my mom will celebrate me. My mom will be happy, about, happy with me. My family, you know, God has delivered me from this shame from my family. God has delivered me from this shame from my friends. So when your mind is preoccupied with those things and you're not thinking long term, you're not thinking of what marriage could look like with this person, and I'm talking about marriage in the realistic perspective, in terms of sharing responsibilities. And there's a lot of marriage. I've been married for nine years, you know, and I'm, I'm going to be 10, 10 in, in a couple, in a few months. So I know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm speaking from the depth of experience. There's some things about my wife that I didn't discover until after 80 years in marriage. So, and I'm not talking about negative things, but things that if I'd seen them much earlier, probably our marriage would have been much stronger. So marriage is living, you know, living and spending the rest of your life with a person who has a background, who came from somewhere, who has their own problems, who who is also broken in one capacity or the other. Marriage ain't a joke, right? So marriage should not be self-focused, what I want to get. Marriage should be focused on what can we do together to make the world a better place, to raise kids, to be a blessing to the kingdom of God too, you know, and, and it goes on and on. So if you are not getting your identity or if you don't seek your identity in the right place, you will miss, you will be blind to red flags in the life of that person and your eyes may not be open until you get married and that should not be your portion or your reality in the future. And that thing is that when you are quite desperate and uh, you think you are broken, and your identity, your identity is not in the right place. I mean, in Christ Jesus, you will tolerate abuse. And I've dealt with countless women who are tolerating abuse today, even though they think they are happy, and they they remain in that relationship or they tolerate it even before they got married because they think something is broken in them. They think now that I'm married and I'm respected among my friends, my family, I have everything in the world. And I hear some silly things. Some women say things like. You know, that's one of the challenges of marriage. You bear it, you endure. Marriage is for endurance. My friend, that's not true. You don't endure marriage. You know, marriage is not meant to add to the problems in your life. Marriage is to kind of help 
overcome certain troubles in your life, provided you work collaboratively and to, you know, and to help you become who God has called you to be. So marriage should not define your purpose, but marriage can actually be a catalyst, a support system, can provide a support system to help you fulfill your purpose. Some people are tolerating abuse right now in their marriage relationship. I can address that in this episode. But if you are still single, you need to think about those things. If you don't get your identity right, you will tolerate abuse and you, will, you may not fulfill your purpose and you may just exist in life and not live a meaningful life. Also, the, the next point is, you know, not having your identity in the right place will, will, could derail you from fulfilling your purpose, kind of fit into what I just talked about, right? You tolerate abuse and you will not fulfill purpose, right? Because to a very much extent, what you deal with on a daily basis is how to overcome a problem, how to maintain peace in the home, peace and quiet. You know, I, I came from, from an abusive, home you know there was a lot of domestic abuse and violence in my home with my dad my mom and stuff like that and if we could if we could just have it peace and quiet you know one night man that was a great evening but is that god's best for you so you'll be preoccupied with things that don't help your life and destiny so not having your identity secure in the right place you will uh could derail you from your purpose another thing you should also bear in mind is that you might be out of the marriage in no time and with pain or scars. I'm speaking from experience, not that I'm divorced, but I've dealt with a lot, quite a number of women. Probably some of you guys know I'm a pastor. If you want to be married, you know, till death do you path. If you don't get your identity in the right place, that marriage could be cut short and you may end up in the shame you don't want to uh, be in. So one question is this, why don't you sort out your identity? I'm not, I'm not saying you should remain single for eternity. Why don't you, you know, check your heart and evaluate yourself, ask yourself questions. Why am I miserable? Why do I feel broken? Why am I looking in the wrong places to feel valued? Uh, you know, ask yourself this question. Why am I not putting my confidence and faith in Christ Jesus? You may need some counseling. You may want to seek counseling from professional therapists, professional people, but Christian, if I'll be very honest, because most of the time, therapists who are not Christian, sound Christian may actually lead you in the path of carnality, in the path of flesh, you know, in a carnal and ungodly way that could, that could actually complicate your situation. And I'm speaking from experience because I've spoken to people and I've counseled people, re people who have been to therapy. So why don't you check your heart and try to fix your heart? You know, the Bible says that if you delight yourself in the Lord, it will grant the desires of your heart. Uh, Psalm uh, 37 verse 4. So delight yourself in the Lord and it will grant the desires of your heart. I want to challenge you to start meditating on who God says you are. You can go through the book of Ephesians, chapter 1 to chapter 3, that talks about your position in Christ Jesus, who you are in Christ Jesus, what God has done for you in Christ Jesus. Spend some time to, to personalize those prayers that Paul said, or those things that Paul said about believers. Go into a relationship with a healed heart so that you can take healing into a relationship. Don't go into a relationship with a broken heart such that you take pain into relationship. I'm not saying that we should be perfect before we go into relationship. I'm saying that if there are major issues in our heart whereby we feel unvalued, we feel broken, we feel worthless, let's fix these issues. You know, these are issues that you can fix even in six months if you commit to the process of meditating on God's word. Amen. So delight yourself in the Lord. Take joy. Take joy in believing that you are who God says you are and you will begin to experience the supernatural power of God to heal your heart. You will begin to see value and worth in you. You know, and part of delighting yourself in the Lord is also trying to focus on what he has called you to do. You know, what has God called you to do? What does God want to do through you? Right? What does God want to do through you? And what is he calling you to do? Who are the people he has called you to? So I want you to think about these things. Let God be the center of your joy. Let God be the driving force of your life. You know, choose to be contented in who God says you are and what he wants to do through you. And you will be amazed that you begin to experience wholeness in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm just going to pray with you very quickly. I'll just speak one or two words into your heart. You know, regarding this, Father, I pray for this 
young lady i pray for this young woman in the name of the lord jesus lord i pray that they'll begin to find strength to delight in you i understand that it's not usually easy it's easier said than done but i want to pray for strength in their heart that they will begin to delight in you you know taking joy and pride and pleasure in who you say they have that they are blessed they are loved they are whole in the name of the lord jesus and i pray in the name of jesus that they will begin to gain energy to focus their attention on who you have called them to be and not seeking for validation in the wrong places in the name of jesus thank you holy spirit in jesus name if this uh podcast is helping you strengthening you and helping you to discover who you are or reminding you who god said you are why don't you give this particular episode a thumbs up and why don't you just subscribe why don't you subscribe to this channel so that you get notified when new episodes are actually released all right thank you guys and looking forward to connect with you in the next episode mm-hmm.